Hello and welcome to another Canon Indian channel feature. In this video, I will be reviewing a book by John Love called McDonald's Behind the Arches. This book is about one of my favorite mentors, the McDonald's co-founder Ray Kroc. This is an old book published in November 1986. There are many books and publications written about the McDonald's Corporation, this being my favorite as I feel this book is written in an extremely neutral perspective. This book primarily discusses about McDonald's Corporation after Ray Kroc carried the franchise helm from the original McDonald brothers. If you are an aspiring entrepreneur or a business student, I urge you to study about Ray Kroc's life. He built the most successful food corporation of our era. To quote Jim Ron, success leaves cues. I've always believed that if you follow the traits of successful people, chances of you being successful is guaranteed. If you watch my other videos about Sam Walton, Maxwell Maltz, Elon Musk, you know that I have used the ideologies and philosophies to achieve success in my life. I assure you of success if you comprehend and apply these traits in your everyday life. I have always been fascinated by Ray Kroc's business ideology and philosophy. Everyone knows McDonald's is big, but very few know just how significant its impact on American and world business really is. Before Ray Kroc's McDonald's had been in operation for three decades, Ray Kroc had become an American business legend. He was one of America's most enterprising capitalists, a rugged individualist who took his biggest gamble and collected his biggest payoff just 13 years before he could begin collecting on his social security. When World War I started, Ray got the fever to go overseas working in the same company as another driver, Walt Disney. Curiously, the two would develop a remarkably similar business empire, both dedicated to perfection in the operation and youthful spirit in their marketing. Though each admired the other, they were character opposites. Croc spent nearly the next 25 years selling new retailing concepts to a food service industry full of Hydeboyne traditionalists. He had never run a restaurant, never served a hamburger, and never sold a milkshake, but by the end of that period, he knew more about the trend towards convenience food than any of the food service professionals. So when he saw the McDonald's drive in San Bernardino in 1954, he was no outsider looking in. Croc tried to negotiate a contract with the McDonald's brothers that would give him exclusive rights to the franchise, the McDonald's system nationally. While Dick and Mac the original McDonald's brothers welcomed having a man of Croc's experience to take over the franchising task. They insisted on setting all the condition, the most important of which were the franchising fees. Had Croc been more financially oriented, he might have realized how one-sided that deal was. Had the McDonald's brother understood that they were more to franchising than selling their name and providing a skimpy operating manual? they would have realized that there was no way Croc could properly service his franchisees and still make a profit. Croc's acceptance of the deal was the surest evidence of his desperation. During those times, Dairy Queen and Tasty Freeze were pioneers of the fast food industry. Essentially, the approach Croc took in franchising was the same as he took in selling food service supplies. His success was based on finding a way to make his customers successful with his product. As simple as it sounds, it was a revolutionary idea in a rapidly expanding food franchising business. And Croc's notion of a fair and a balanced franchise partnership is without question his greatest legacy ever. During those time, in all the other food franchising schemes, Franchisers made their profit before their franchisees did, whether by selling franchisees' territories to investors for a huge upfront fees or by supplying franchisees with food, paper, and equipment typically at a markup that were higher than they would pay on the open market. By comparison, 
everything in Croc's franchising plan was designed to encourage the success of his franchisees first, and on that, McDonald's would itself prosper. Croc instinctively knew that making an easy killing at the expense of his franchisees would not produce anything that would last. McDonald's was in a business to satisfy the retail consumer. But as a veteran salesman, Croc knew he was also in a business to serve his franchisees and build a loyalty with them. They were his customers too, and if they failed, he failed. Though Croc had turned 52 years old, a few months he incorporated McDonald's systems. He had yet to ripen. He possessed the energy and stamina of a man in his 30s. In McDonald's, he was convinced that he had the sales opportunity he had trained for. He also knew it was a type of opportunity that would never come his way again. It was practically life or death for me, Croc said. If I lost out on McDonald's, I had no place to go. When Ray Croc formed the McDonald's systems on March 2nd, 1955, he was among a dozen or so entrepreneur who were seeking to extend franchising into the fledging fast food business. Croc's McDonald's had no head start in franchising against the likes of Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, or Chicken Delight. Within a couple of years of starting McDonald's, Croc found himself in an overcrowded field that included such additional competitors such as Burger King, Burger Queen, Carol and Sandy's. Furthermore, the new fast food chains were merely applying franchising methods used in other industries since the turn of the century. Croc resisted the temptation to make big profits by selling products and equipment to his franchisees. That policy was going against the industry gains. Virtually all other major food franchisees made a good portion of their profits on the markups on the good they supplied to the operators. One of Croc's famous words were, when you find a good selfish reason for people to cooperate with you, you're pretty sure of the cooperation. By refusing to profit at the expense of his franchisees, McDonald's was putting the franchisee's financial position ahead of its own. The book also discusses two very important people, June Martino, Croc's enterprising, aggressive, connival, slightly offbeat secretary, and Harry Sunnyborn, the new man that Croc hired to help find sites for McDonald's. Croc realized that McDonald's appeal to those seeking no establishment environment virtually required diversity in management. Nowhere was the diversity more striking in contrast of personality of the three charter managers and initial owners of the business, which is Ray Kroc, June Martino, and Harry Sunnyborn. Martino and Sunnyborn were given equity in the company in the late 1950s, with Martino receiving 10% and Sunnyborn receiving 20%. Less than a decade later, when McDonald's became a public company with a hot stock, Croc's first two partners became multi-millionaires. The word secretary, particularly in a 1950s setting, vastly underestimates Martino's role and misrepresents her character. She was one of the handful of women who grew beyond the narrow confines of that title because she was the rare woman of her era who was not intimidated by a male-dominated workplace. Martino's success at McDonald's was perhaps the first indication of Croc's willingness to delegate authority to individuals cut from a different cloth. But the surest sign that he planned to manage McDonald's with a melting pot of personality was the power he entrusted to Harry Sunnyborn. Harry Sunnyborn and Ray Croc were a study in contrast. Sunnyborn was Croc's partner in starting McDonald's and his contribution was so vital he was nearly a co-founder. Sunnyborn liked all the things in the business that Croc disliked. He enjoyed managing a company by its financial numbers and Croc had so little interest in finances that he could not even interpret a balance sheet. Although Sunnyburn is unknown outside of McDonald's and even now by many on the inside, he is the man who developed the formula to convert the McDonald's into a financial powerhouse. 
Due to Sunnyborn's smart business acumen, McDonald's today is the largest real estate holder in the world. It holds more real estate than the Catholic Church. Sunnyburn was also responsible to take the company public. It was the first for any fast food business. Achieving uniformity is the toughest single task of any franchise service business. Unlike manufacturers which produce uniform products simply by centralizing production, fast food franchisees sell a product produced at a local store by infinitely different operators. Essentially, McDonald's had but one operational secret that made it industry stand out. It found a way to obtain strict manufacturing uniformity without stifling the initial creativity of its operator through excessive regimentation. Ray Kroc was never driven as much by money as he was by his ego. He had such an extreme amount of personal pride that when he saw a bad McDonald's, he went berserk. In setting up his operating system, McDonald's displayed no genius, just tenacity. McDonald's was also the first food company that maintained high degree of quality of food. McDonald's demanded from the meat suppliers to be free of chemicals or fillers. If McDonald's found that the suppliers cheated, they would end their contract. Ray Kroc was obsessed by the quality of the food and service, hence he set up a McDonald's lab and a hamburger university. Kroc spent millions testing potatoes to have the uniform crisp crunch and looked golden brown, a signature along the McDonald's restaurant. He then spent millions trying to set up chicken nugget factory because back in those times, mechanically deboning chicken was unheard of. The lab and the university made several enhancements to improvise the food production. Hence the term McDonaldize is commonly used today. Myth abound that McDonald's was created single-handedly by Ray Kroc. The truth is that Ray Kroc did not invent fast food and was not the first to discover the McDonald's brothers who did. Nor was he a new product or advertising genius. Few people realize his true brilliance, his ability to motivate and harness the power of hundreds of entrepreneurs. By enforcing rigid standards of quality, service and cleanliness amongst his franchisees and suppliers, Kroc revolutionized the food service industry in United States and around the world. To sum up on Ray Kroc's life, the main takeaways are as follows. Believe in yourself and your vision. Ray Kroc's McDonald's came way after other franchisees, such as KFC, DQ and others, but they never achieved success such as McDonald's. Put your customers first. Ray Kroc barely scraped through making money through McDonald's initial years. He even mortgaged his house to get through, but ensured that the franchisees succeeded. He stated that McDonald's are in this for a long run. If the franchisees succeed, it will ensure McDonald's success in the long run. Provide the customer value. Ray Kroc went beyond anyone in the industry starting a food lab and hamburger university to ensure customers get the best value. He even brought in one of the stringent measures to food quality. Build people and they will build your company. Ray Kroc focused on expanding McDonald's by harnessing on people's abilities. June Martino, Harry Sunnyborn, Fred Turner, were regular employees with very little corporate America management experience. Yet, they built McDonald's into a powerhouse and Ray Kroc ensures that they were rewarded well for the efforts. Thank you for watching this video. This is Can Indian Channel signing off. Peace.